Before we get started today, remember to hit that like button. That always helps me out and helps other people view my videos. Uh, if it's people that like this kind of stuff. So I always like to remind you of that. So today, we're going to be making some good old-fashioned apple butter. I wish I could take you outside over an open flame with a big old pot and make it that way, but I ain't going to be able to do that today. So I'm going to show you the next best thing. Okay, this is going to be all on the stove top. It'll take us about two or three hours uh, from start to finish. So not too bad for a delicious treat, especially this winter on some homemade biscuits, y'all. Don't get no better than that. So, went up to Cana, Virginia, got me a box of apples. Um, there's a place I like going up there called the Mountain Man, and I always go up there and get my peaches and apples. So I'll be freezing some peaches later today, too. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. I've got my apples soaking in some water. I like to wash them first. And then I've got my handy dandy apple peeler and core. Uh, if you're going to be making apple butter, you can make it with the peelings. So this thing right here makes life a hundred times easier. So let's get going. So I don't have any heat on my apples over here yet. I'm just adding them to the pot as I go. I like to catch my apple peelings. These right here, this variety of apples, they are super duper soft. That's what you're looking for when you're gonna be making apple butter or dehydrating apples for pies or anything like that. You like these soft, these soft tart apples seem to do the best. It doesn't take them as long to cook down. If you use the apples from the grocery store, I mean you can, but I'm gonna tell y'all from experience, it does take a little longer for them to cook. So find you a local orchard go get you some good green apples and it's still a little early for apples around here yet but they had some early apples coming in so i went ahead and grabbed some while i was in the area keep your apple peelings and your cores you can make apple cider vinegar out of that if you want to i'm gonna take mine to the chickens that'll be a nice cool treat on this hot day so that's my plan so far now what we're gonna do my pot's full now this right here is probably 10 12 pounds of apples what i'm using here um so now i'm gonna take i'm gonna pour about a quart of water in it that's just to keep apples from sticking to the bottom of your pot. We'll cut this on about medium heat. And now I'm going to let this cook until these apples are really soft and mushy. Um, that's what we'll do here. Like I said, I'm making this the old fashioned way, so I'm not going to be using a blender or anything. That's another reason I didn't want them peelings in there. So we'll let that cook down, take about 15 minutes, and I'll be back with you. Now I do like to go through and mash them up a little bit with my spoon. Just keep an eye on it, stir it every few minutes. You ain't gotta constantly stir it, but like I said, don't want apples sticking to the bottom. And somebody was asking in one of my other videos where in the world I got this big old pot from. Let me tell y'all, this is my favorite pot of all time, especially this time of year doing this kind of stuff. Um, so the name brand on it is a Biltmore and if I'm not mistaken, it came from Belks and I think, I want to say it was a wedding gift. I know mama bought it for me, but I can't remember if it was a wedding gift or a, um, birthday gift. Mama, if you watch this, comment down there and tell them when you got this for me because I can't remember, ain't that awful? But yes, I use the fire out of this pot right here. 
Um, so leave in the comments, are y'all getting apples yet? Like in your area, I know everywhere is different. Um, like I said, ours, this is a little early for apple stuff, but they had some up there and I was getting peaches anyway. So I went ahead and got some. Um, tried to can peaches a few years ago. Had some tough results and I hadn't tried since. I know I should try again, but I haven't. Uh, I just usually peel them and slice them and freeze them and they seem to do fine that way. Only thing I don't like about it is it takes up freezer space, but I may try to make some peach butter. That would probably be really good. I don't know if I try that or not. Apples into the food mill. Y'all, I looked up last year. I found this thing at the Goodwill for like five bucks. Probably just somebody cleaning out somebody's house and found it, I reckon, and decided to take it to the Goodwill. All right. So I'm just going to mash those apples down in there. Now at this point, when we get done with this step, you'll have applesauce. So if you want to know how to make applesauce, it's just like this. And you add your little sugar. But we're going to cook it down farther than applesauce. If they wanted something such as apple butter, they had to make it themselves. Same goes for just about anything else, you know. Nowadays, people's ready to throw a dollar at anything, and you can go to the store and buy apple butter. You can go to the store and buy, and I mean, shoot, just about anything you want for now, anyway. Just take some of the, I don't know if magic is the word for it. But if you go to the store and buy apple butter, you know it sure, you sure don't appreciate it. Like if you stood here and turned this thing for an hour, crushing up all these apples. And you know what? It may just not taste as good either. Sometimes I wonder if home cooked meals and stuff like this taste better because of the love that was put into it. Maybe the love and the heart that's put into it is what makes it taste so good. Now what we have is a good looking pot of applesauce. So like I said, if you're making applesauce, add whatever sugar or cinnamon or whatever you wanna add and there's your applesauce. But we're gonna take it another step further. We're gonna add to our old fashioned apple butter is about a half a cup of molasses, which is about what that right there is. This right here, some homemade from a fella up the road. It is so, so good. So it's gonna make some awesome, awesome apple butter. The next thing we're gonna need is a cup of brown sugar. This is a half a cup measuring 
thing, so when you put two in there, that's why. A cup of white sugar. do about a tablespoon of cinnamon. A teaspoon of real vanilla extract. Ooh, it smells so good. Gonna give that a good stir. We're gonna cut our heat on medium. And now once it's at this point, you gotta kinda keep an eye on it. And we're gonna look, let it simmer down and cook about an hour or two till it's the thickness that I want. up even more once we put it in the jars so we're ready to get this stuff canned now whenever I'm making jelly or apple butter or anything like that another way to keep mold from growing on top which does happen occasionally um, is to get all the moisture out of your jar so I wash these jars real good and I put them in my oven and that is one of the best ways to keep mold from any of your jellies or anything like that. So just remember your jars are hot. Use the oven glove to pick them up. All right, I'm gonna get it in here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my heat off. This stuff is hot. I had some pop out on my finger a while ago and it it didn't feel too good. So we're gonna take that off, put it on the next jar. Get our lid and our ring. Look at that. Beautiful. 